this man got his start in political life when he was drafted to fight in that genocidal war in Vietnam, and he said, hell no. He refused to fight, even though it put him in military prison for two years, one year of which was solitary, he came out unrepentant. He became a revolutionary, a member of the, black liber the movement for black liberation and then a founding member of the Revolutionary Communist Party USA. He's a long distance freedom fighter. He is a co-founder together with Cornell West of the Stop Mass Incarceration Network. He is somebody who has been on the front lines from Ferguson to Baltimore to Standing Rock to Baton Rouge. Everywhere people are standing up and fighting back and everywhere that the masses of people are being gunned down by police, black and Latino people and many other injustices. You can find Carl Dix. We are very honored to have him with us here tonight. Okay, let's face what we're actually up against. There's a grave danger looming over humanity. Just little more than a month from tonight, a fascist regime, the Trump-Pence regime, is slated to take the reins of power in society, in this the most powerful country in the world. This will have dire consequences for humanity if it is allowed to happen. It isn't just that Trump campaigned on a program that included a lot of horrendous things. I mean, he promised to bar Muslims from entering the country, to surveil and deport them. He promised to build a wall on the border with Mexico and to deport millions of immigrant workers. As he campaigned, he told lie after lie after lie and he threatened those who opposed to expose his lies. He whipped up a lynch mob atmosphere at his rallies, targeting minorities, dissenters, or people in the press. And it isn't just that he's assembling a team of ghouls to carry out this program. Open white supremacists, religious fanatics, militarists and the like. It's all of this taken together. This is a fascist regime. Now the website revcom.us has described fascism as follows. The exercise of blatant dictatorship by the bourgeois capitalist imperialist class. Ruling through reliance on open terror and violence. Trampling on what are supposed to be civil and legal rights. Wielding the power of the state and mobilizing organized groups of fanatical thugs to commit atrocities against masses of people, particularly groups of people identified as enemies, undesirables, or dangers to society. This is what the Trump-Pence regime will mean to the country and to the world. We must not let this go down. We must act now to stop this regime before it gets started. And look, I know that this system, this capitalist imperialist system, already inflicts unspeakable horrors on people in this country and around the world. I know that it's devastating the environment of the very planet that we live on. And people here have been fighting that for years. I know that the US wages wars for empire in the Middle East that have caused the deaths of hundreds of thousands of people and driven countless millions into exile. People like Jeremy have done tremendous exposure of that. I know that in this country, women are treated like sex objects in punching bags. I know that their right to choose to have an abortion is under attack. Many people in this room, including Fran and others, have been in this battle to fight to stop those attacks. I know that black people face savage oppression mass incarceration, police terror, an education system that's geared to fail our youth, and more. And I've stood shoulder to shoulder with a lot of you in the fight to stop that. I also know that record numbers of undocumented immigrants have been rounded up and deported under the so-called immigration President Obama, 
And some people here in this room have been fighting that over the past eight years and more, too. But if this Trump-Pence regime is allowed to take power, all of these horrors will be greatly intensified. It'll be like they got put on steroids. And this regime will move to violently repress, if necessary, or intimidate any and all who dissent against it, who promote critical thinking of reality. And they'll move to cut off all possibility of resisting all these horrors. We've seen this happen before in Nazi Germany in the 1930s, in Chile and other countries in the 1970s. The whole society is drastically and radically changed. And the horrors that go down darken the sky, as one historian put it. And they do, it does so for a long time. And if you want to understand this, here's another way to look at it. Let's look at what happened after the end of the Civil War here in this country. Now, slavery was abolished. Black people got the right to vote. Some black people got elected to positions in the government. And an education system was set up that gave black people access to education for the first time. This was a tremendous change. But it was also a tremendous shock, especially to white people in the South. And some of the people who voted for Trump ain't got over that shock yet. Some of them still think the Civil War got the side wrong, and they wish the other side had won. What followed was a period of, called Reconstruction. It wasn't paradise, but black people were able to raise their heads and to make some gains. They had to do this against continued terror and resistance from white supremacists, but at least black people could contest this and fight. But then in 1876, after a disputed presidential election, Reconstruction was overthrown. The defeated forces of the Confederacy were allowed to take power back, and they used that power to change everything. They snatched back just about every right that black people had won, and they murdered thousands of black people in the process. And then they killed thousands more over the following decades with lynch mobs, and other kinds of terror. They created a situation where every black person knew that at any time they could be killed by whites for any reason or no reason at all. This had dire consequences for black people for decades to come after that. See, and here I have to say that if you're one of these people who like some of these misguided comedians who said, well, black people have survived worse than Trump. We'll get through this too. I got two things I want to ask you. One, why would you want to go through some shit like that again? That's one. And two, why wouldn't you want to stand up and join with others to act to stop it in the interest of all of humanity? So that's why I'm here tonight, and that's why we're all here, to stop a fascist regime from taking the reins of power in society. And the unity that we need to do this has to encompass tens of millions of people who see the importance of doing this. Now, a lot of y'all know me. I'm still the same guy. I'm a revolutionary communist. I'm a follower of Bob Avakian. I've spent my life fighting to make revolution and bring into being a radically different world. And I know that this is still what humanity needs to end the horrors of this system once and for all, and that making this revolution is possible. And right now, coming from that viewpoint, I see the need, the burning need, to throw in with everybody else to accomplish a goal that is far short of revolution. And that goal is stopping the Trump-Pence regime before it gets started. See, and I see the need to do that because humanity needs to stop this regime 
to be able to fight for any kind of larger goal. So that's what we need to do. Now, how do we do it? To get into that, I want to read a paragraph from the plan issued by RefuseFascism.org. Imagine if people in the tens of millions fill the streets, powerfully declaring that this regime is illegitimate and demanding that it not be allowed to rule. The whole political landscape would be dramatically transformed. Every faction within the established power structure would be forced to respond. And all this could well lead to a situation in which this fascist regime is actually prevented from ruling. This is not some idle dream, but something which could be made a reality if all those who hate what is represented by this regime translate their outrage into firm determination and massive mobilization to create the conditions which make this possible. So that's what we need to do, and it begins right here tonight. Everybody in this room and everybody watching on the live stream has got to get involved in making this happen, starting now. We've got to get organized into this, and then we, all of us, have to go out and organize others into it, unleashing them to go out and organizing others still into it. And we've only got a month to do this, so we can't lose any time in making this happen. We've got to reach out in every way that we can to let others know that we need to mobilize millions to stop this fascist regime. You gotta talk about this at your workplaces. You gotta talk about this in your places of worship. You gotta talk about this in your communities. Students have an important role to play in this, to make it happen. I mean, if you're a college student, you can spend your winter break organizing this effort to stop the Trump-Pence regime from taking the reins of power in society. And so you can also reach through your networks to other students, even if they aren't taking classes right now. And this is an effort that needs to go viral. And students can put their effort into making it go viral, spreading it everywhere through social media and in other ways. And the high schools are still in session. And they'll go back into session right after the holidays. So that's an arena where organizing to stop this regime can begin right now. Now look, the holidays are coming up, but this ain't gonna be a break in this effort. It's gotta be a time to get more people organized into it. Religious gatherings that take place during the holiday season need to be places where people hear about the need to act to stop this fascist regime and get organized into it. You having family gatherings during the holiday? Well, a topic of discussion has to be the need to stop this Trump-Pence regime and how to do it and getting people organized into it. And then afterward, we gotta come back together and take this no, which is the symbol of this effort and the call for this effort to resist to another level, getting it out every, raising the money needed to make this happen. Then on New Year's Eve, people need to take to the streets everywhere being a living manifesto of the mass determination that exists broadly in society to act to stop this fascist regime. Every Trump property anywhere in the country, and even anywhere in the world, needs to have a demonstration out in front of it saying no to fascism on New Year's Eve. And then that no symbol needs to be everywhere, at the demonstrations, posted up and spread online, put up on the walls, and maybe somebody will even come up with a creative way for it to prominently appear in Times Square on New Year's Eve. Then, as January opens, the call to refuse to accept a fascist America is going to appear as an ad in a major publication like the New York Times, many other places, in print and online. 
broadly sounding the alarm on the danger that this regime poses for the country and the world and calling on people to join the effort to stop it. And then, beginning with January 3rd, we've got to lead people into the street in mass actions. Mass actions that call to mind the way that people responded after the system refused to indict the cops who murdered Mike Brown in Ferguson and Eric Garner in New York, with people taking to the streets day after day, staying in the streets, disrupting business as usual. These actions also have to bring to mind Occupy, with people in the streets day and night, standing together against injustice. We gotta be doing this every day. We gotta be growing as we do it, spreading the word, because we gotta reach tens of millions, 100 million people with this. We gotta have that many people knowing about it in order to get the millions of people in the streets that are gonna be needed to do this. January 12 and 13, that's a day of school walkouts all across the country. College, that's right. That's gotta be the day when if you're in college, high school, even middle school, you stepping out on that day because you don't want your future to be having to endure being ruled by a fascist regime. Then we're up to the Martin Luther King holiday weekend. That's a weekend when people got to pour into D.C. on a whole other level in powerful actions aimed at stopping this regime. Not just going down and registering that you don't like it and go home, but going down there to act to stop it and staying in D.C. Don't go back home at the end of the weekend. Stay in D.C. Demonstrate all over the city. Disrupt the business as usual of that town all through that week. And as we do that, call on others to join us. To join us in acting and disrupting the business as usual to stop this fascist regime from taking power. And look, those of you either here in this room or on the live stream that can't get to D.C., okay, well, you try to get there, but if you can't make it, act wherever you are. Be in the streets together with us, even if you're geographically separate from us, acting together to do the same thing, to stop this Ill illegitimate regime from taking power. See, and all of these efforts taken together would be aimed at creating an unprecedented political crisis in society that could lead to the stopping of this illegitimate regime. Now, this ain't something that's gonna be easy, but it is possible. I mean, I've been around a while. You can see that by that gray here. During my lifetime, presidents have been driven from office, including in this country. LBJ didn't just decide he didn't wanna run again. It was the crisis and the chaos in society that forced that decision. But let's get more recent so that it's in everybody's memory. Let's go back a few years to Egypt. They had an illegitimate regime. Millions of people took to the streets to hear square and stayed in the streets until that regime was toppled. Because see, millions of people can come suddenly and seemingly out of nowhere when the dam bursts. And we got to burst that dam in acting to stop this regime. I'm going to read again that paragraph from the plan issued by refusefascism.org. Imagine if people in the tens of millions fill the streets, powerfully declaring that this regime is illegitimate and demanding that it not be allowed to rule. The whole political landscape would be dramatically transformed. Every faction within the established power structure would be forced to respond. And all this could well lead to a situation in which this fascist regime is actually prevented from ruling. This is not some idle dream, but something which could be made a reality if all those who hate what is represented by this fascist regime translate their outrage into firm determination and massive mobilization to create the conditions which make this possible. 
For this to happen, we all need to organize on another level. We need to become the organizers of organizers of organizers. We need to throw our all in on this for the next month and more. Because just think what it would have meant if people had been able to join together to stop Hitler before his regime got started. Think of the difference it would have made for humanity. Well, I'm not trying to minimize what Hitler did, but today we're facing a fascist regime that's determined to institute a fascist rule with a finger on the nuclear buttons aiming to make America first. We can stop this if we fight hard, creatively, and with unity. And the future of humanity may depend upon our success. Thank you, sisters.